My name is Joyce Bomus. I'm a technical physician in the radiology department of the Radboud UMC and I'm going to tell you something about MRI-guided prostate biopsy. Prostate cancer is currently the most common non-cutaneous cancer. Although prostate cancer often has indolent disease scores, it remains the second leading cause of cancer-related death and can threaten long-term health. The past three decades have seen a steep rise in prostate cancer incidence because of the development in diagnostic tools as for example PSA testing and longer life expectancy, more prostate cancers are now detected. Biopsy is the only technique capable of providing definitive histopathologic diagnosis of prostate cancer. For this, every year thousands of patients undergo a prostate biopsy. In general, when there is an increased risk of prostate cancer, a prostate biopsy is performed using transrectal ultrasound, TRUS. During a TRUS biopsy, 10 to 12 random tissue samples are obtained in a systematic grid-like pattern. However, systematic biopsies are hampered by sampling errors, tumor multifocality and heterogeneity of the lesion, or a combination of these factors. This leads to a low detection rate, a relative high rate of clinical insignificant cancers and undersampling. As histopathology results obtained from trust guided biopsy are commonly used in nomograms for risk assessment and prognosis in prostate cancer, this will lead to overdiagnosis of indolent prostate cancer and underdiagnosis of high risk tumors with subsequent wrong disease management. This illustrates the need for a more accurate diagnostic tool. As multiparametric MRI is the most sensitive and specific imaging technique for localizing prostate cancer. Next to detection, localization and staging of prostate cancer, it can be used to target biopsies towards regions previously determined to be suspicious for prostate cancer. MR image guided biopsy can be formed in three different ways. For each of these methods, the multiparametric MRI for tumor detection and localization and the biopsy procedure need to be performed in two different sessions, because image post-processing and accurate localization require time. At the moment there is no consensus as to which is the best method. MRI targeted biopsy outperforms standard biopsies in various measures of cancer detection. It results in fewer biopsies in fewer men with a decreased amount of clinically insignificant cancers compared to standard trust biopsy. The first method is visual or cognitive targeting where the operator performs a trust guided biopsy and aims for specific cancer suspicious regions previously detected on the MR images. An advantage of this method is that it needs no additional equipment. However, especially anterior and apical cancer suspicious regions can be hard to identify on ultrasound images and can therefore be missed. The second method is completely MRI guided. So the complete biopsy is performed in the MR scanner itself. A needle guide is inserted in the rectum and the radiologist has to manually adjust the needle guide to aim to the cancer suspicious region. This procedure needs a trained radiologist and takes more time than a systematic truss biopsy. For these reasons, MR compatible robots for needle placement have been developed. The third method is by using rigid or elastic registration or fusion software, where MR images are fused with real time truss images. The crucial factor in this method is accurate fusion of the images, which can be affected by, for example, prostate deformation or patient movement. Indication for MRI guided biopsy MRI guided prostate biopsy should be performed when a pirate's 4 or 5 lesion is seen on the MR images. Furthermore, pirate's 3 lesions with a high clinical suspicion, for example, a high PSA level or a high PSA density, should be biopsied. Now it's clear when to perform MRI guided biopsy. Now we need to define when to perform MRI trust fusion biopsy. When cancer suspicious regions larger than 1 cm are detected and when these are clearly visible on T2 weighted images or on the fusion weighted imaging, MRI trust fusion biopsy is the preferred biopsy technique. If cancer suspicious regions smaller than 1 cm are detected, MRI guided inbore biopsy should be performed. Also, when the lesion is located very apical or ventral in the prostate, MRI-guided inbore biopsy is preferred above MRI transfusion biopsy. 
Another important point is the patient preparation. Patients should be given standard antibiotic prophylaxis, which consists in our hospital out of three days of ciprofloxacilline, two times a day, 500 mg, and starting on a day before biopsy. If patient uses anticoagulation medication, this should be stopped because the INR should be below 1.5 on the day of biopsy. Next to this, it should be checked whether endocarditis prophylaxis is needed. This is necessary when a patient had a previous endocarditis or has cardiac valve prothesis or certain congenital cardiac diseases. For MRI-guided inboard biopsy, the next materials are needed. An MR scanner, a biopsy robot, a needle guide and a biopsy needle. Now we come to the workflow. First we take care of proper patient positioning. The patient must be as comfortable as possible to avoid patient movement during the biopsy procedure. Then we insert the needle guide and attach it to the robotic device. We start MR imaging to relocate the cancer suspicious region. When this is done, we can do the biopsy planning with the dedicated software and target the needle guide towards the right position. This is checked with a short control image and then we can take the actual biopsy. The MRI truss fusion setup usually consists of a magnetic field generator, a transrectal transducer, fusion position sensor and a biopsy instrument. The MRI truss fusion biopsy procedure consists out of the following steps. The first step is to upload the multiparametric MRI into the ultrasound device. The second step is to delineate the target point. This can be done by the radiologist up front, otherwise you have to do it by yourself. Detect the prostate by using ultrasound imaging is the next step. Followed by linking the ultrasound imaging with the multiparametric MRI imaging. The next step is aiming and tracking of the biopsy course. In our hospital, we prefer the patient to be positioned in the left lateral position. In our hospital, we are using an end firing probe because imaging of the apex is easier and it's more comfortable to the patient. The probe is covered preferably with a latex-free condom or probe cover. A circumferential examination of the rectum should be performed, followed by examination of the prostate, which includes size, symmetry on both sides, preference or nodules or induration, tenderness and pain in the prostate. Before seeing the patient, the MRI data are uploaded to the ultrasound system. For starting the procedure, you first have to choose the right acquisition. You can scroll through the images and see where the lesion is. Next, you can mark this lesion on the MRI. This mark will also appear on the live ultrasound imaging. The following step you have to perform is to synchronize the MRI and ultrasound images. For this, you have to look for the same anatomical landmark on the MRI and the ultrasound. Once you have found this landmark, you can confirm the registration and start the procedure. The MRI and ultrasound are now synchronized. For improving precision, you can repeat this procedure with additional landmarks, preferably as close as possible to the lesion. It is important for the patient to lie as still as possible during the procedure. Once you have optimized the fusion, you can start taking the biopsies. Usually not more than two or three targeted biopsies are performed. To conclude, MRI-guided inbore biopsy and MRI transfusion biopsy are both feasible to target cancer suspicious regions accurately. MRI-guided inbore biopsy is more feasible for small lesions and ventral or apical lesions. MRI transfusion biopsy is more feasible for cancer suspicious regions larger than 1 cm. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something today about MRI guided biopsy and please also watch the other videos.